Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA, and I'm back up here at Timeless Customs with my friend, my brother, Mr. Jason Pesaconis. How you doing, everybody? And today we're digging into a 71 Camaro that he did six years ago? About six years ago. So this car's a little different. Now this car is Art Morris in front and rear. Really, it's just a front cross member with a set of rails. And we've gone in, we've, we've cut the floor, and then we've slid the bikini clip in the car, and then we've stitch welded it all back together. In the okay. rear, we've used the, the stock surroundings and we've hung a four link, triangulated four link and a nine inch Ford in the rear. So the car is full Morrison, but it doesn't have a per se chassis in it. Okay. But we've gone and we've tied the whole car up with a chrome molly cage to give it the integrity that it needs. Right. So what you get out of it is, is you get a rather lightweight platform as opposed to having a put a 700 pound chassis in the car. Right. You get away with maybe putting 300 pounds worth of equipment in the car. Yeah. So the overall weight of the car stays down so this car weighs 3500 pounds you know which is really good for a second generation camaro it's all c6 corvette front suspension it wears the carbon ceramic brembo brakes of course which you uh, love. gotta have those right are they manual brakes yes okay. of course they are <laughs> you know that okay so now what am i looking at ls9 long block edelbrock 2300 supercharger the reason we do it is because the edelbrock has a better intercooler system in it it's got a bigger heat exchanger in the blower so we end up being able to put more boost into the car and it always runs cooler. In a road going car, you know, you always want that ambient air. You always want that, the air coming into the motor ambient. So it's only as good as the intercooler system. So mm -hmm. once again, we've got a big front mount heat exchanger. We've got a water pump and we're cooling the system and it's running all the time, mm -hmm. keeping that, that air ambient. Um, you know, the car makes right now about 600 wheel. Uh, and that's, that's pretty standard for, a, you know, just a headered LS9. Mm -hmm. So we've got only 12 pounds of boost total in the car right now. It's got an inch and seven eighths header on it. It's got a three inch custom exhaust that we built. Mm -hmm. The car is 90% handmade. You know, you know, a lot of things you look at, you go, ah, oh, that could be factory, but in the reality like, this is, is all it's you all, guys, right? Correct. Yeah. All that stuff is all the inner aprons, you know, what you'll notice really is, is you'll notice the motor's really set back in this car. Yeah. And that's really what makes the car handle. Yeah. This is a 50-50 weight distribution. It looks like it sits up kind of higher than a lot of what I see with you. Yeah, it probably does. And, and what happens is, is this is a dry sump motor. So we've got the motor as low as we can with the dry sump oil pan in the chassis, but the nose section width of this car is much similar to, to a Corvette. So yeah. you have a tall motor and a very narrow nose. So yeah. that's kind of where we're at. Obviously we had to have the bulge in the hood to clear the supercharger. So another thing with something I always notice with one of your flavors is flushing your bumpers, tucking them way back in sharpening all the lines, which, right. which I don't even think a lot of people would notice until you see it sitting next to a stock, stock one. Right. And then all of a sudden, all your arches, everything's so sharp. So I, I got to imagine this is the same thing. There's a For ton sure. of body work in this car. A ton of body work. If you notice the whole front end's one piece. Yeah. So there's no seams in anything. Right. The bumpers are really, really tight. Yeah. You know, the, the grill opening this car would have carried a rubber nose. So all this is fabricated out of steel. We were trying to figure out what was going on here, right. dude, because this looks like it comes out further. In, right. Yes. Yeah. So there would have been a plastic bumper that would have gone around the nose of that's, the car. Yes. So that's gone now. Everything's done in metal. Obviously the grill, all the openings, the brake duct openings, all that stuff's fabricated. And those actually feed to the brake. That's right. And that, that mm -hmm. stuff never existed in, the, in this car, right? right. So spent a lot of time on stuff like that. Gaps is super important. We've gone ahead and we've put a late model Corvette style door handle on the car like we do often. Oh yeah, kind of with a around. door popper. With a door popper. Mm -hmm. We've shaved the roof gutters. Uh, there's a sheet metal rear wing in the car. Is this still, is that original yeah. mirror? 71 mirror. It is, yeah. yeah. yeah for Which, sure. why would you change that? It looks great, it's good looking right? Mirror. Yeah. Right, right. A lot of guys will use those mirrors in their earlier cars because yeah. they just look good, you know? Did you go, are these forge lines? No, this is a GM factory Corvette wheel. 
Oh, okay. Uh, it is, uh, this car wear, wears a 20 all the way around, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's just a bigger car, you know? Yeah. Th this car has more wheel arch in it than a first generation, so For the sure. 20 can work on the car. Yeah, because it still squats way down. Yeah, it sits really nice. So the rear of this car carries an F430 Ferrari skirt That's rear, what it is. rear diffuser. Yeah, was... so it's, it's a factory Ferrari carbon fiber rear diffuser, and then we built everything around it. So, so that fit in here though? I mean, like, do you, does it take a ton of adjusting? Yes, I'm yeah. sure. There's hundreds of hours to make that car fit. <laughs> the fuel tank split into two pieces so the exhaust can pass through it. Wow. Uh, the, quarters, the quarter pockets are lengthened and, and dropped down so that there's enough body to cover the outer of the, of the diffuser. The rear bumper is completely sculpted out by hand. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, obviously the sheet metal rear wing, uh, that, that changes it up a little bit as well but all the rear of that car is one off. It's, I mean, the rear of this, the whole car looks exceptional. The rear is my favorite view of this car because of that center exit and that diffuser. Yeah, it's pretty sexy. Yeah. yeah, it's funny, the other day, Kyle and I were looking at pictures of this and Kyle said, that diffuser, that looks like an F430. And I was like, no, Jason, right. it probably yeah, is. Yeah, <laughs> you know, oftentimes we'll build our diffusers, but this is one of those things where we had a we had a plan from the beginning to incorporate a lot of carbon fiber pieces yeah and that's how it worked out which know? is different for you because you're, sure. you're like i know your cars and usually yeah. you're hand we'll building build out of metal and right. aluminum and stuff yeah so this is kind of different for us you're absolutely right yeah this looks all completely reworked your Correct. spoiler yeah and the crazy thing is is if you look at one of these cars the rear of the a normal second gen does not do this it does this really yeah so the way this car is bottle shaped in the back is all because of us. So, so you guys everything's, add... Everything's been moved. The rear tail pan's been brought out. The deck lid's been changed. The rear bumper has all been handmade to give it that all profile, the, right? What is this color actually, by the way? I forgot, that's... This is a BMW anthracite. Mm. So it's like a BMW M3 color. Got it. And you don't see it very often on the M's, you know? Mm -mm. But it's a really pretty color. It's a really it shows great really color. Well in the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, let's go check out the interior okay, here, cool. man. That's just Corvette cool. door That's handle. That's just right? so cool. Is that a modern Camaro door panel? This is. Now, we're not responsible for the door panels, um, but that is, is a 2017 Camaro door panel that's been lengthened and made to fit on this car. And, and it, 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 works, it works on this car, you know? This it does. car does have a, it's got a Marquez Designs dash in it. Mm -hmm. So the dash has been swapped out as well. And then Braum again on the seats, which is a go-to for you these days, right? Yeah, you know, it's just a great seat. It's a, it's a, I don't want to say it's a, it's a, it's an entry-level seat, but it's a phenomenal seat for the money, and, and they work great, and they feel good, and you can spend a lot of time in them. We've never had an issue with them. Obviously, the cage that ties it all together, and it's tried. We've tried to tuck it up in a way as much as possible out of your way, so yeah. it's not. A, it doesn't interfere with your driving experience. Same with your entrance. Your, your right. Your, Try to keep your door bars low. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Um, this again. This is something I'm not used to seeing carbon with your stuff. Right. Yeah. We've we've you know this car. We love carbon, man, but it's it's something that it's out of our control, and anything that's out of our control, we try to eliminate. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So we don't have we don't do carbon in house, unfortunately, and I think that's what it would take for me to really be a big time carbon user. Yeah. So so this car does incorporate a few pieces, like a, you know we talked about the hood mm -hmm. and the diffuser and, the, mm -hmm. and and these pieces and so forth. Yeah. It just adds a little bit to the car, right? Yeah. Not too much. Yeah. The car really has a crazy audio system in it. Um, it's got all focal three-way separates up front and big jail amps and two, yeah. two big focal subs. So this car really has a lot of audio in it. Which, is which not, always, I gotta admit, for me personally, cracks why, me up right? because I'm listening to the car when I'm driving it. Right, you know? and this car does make some noise. Does it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of driving, I say, uh, let's go, do we go it. for a little drive, let's man. Let's do that. All right, you guys, before we go for a drive, we've got merch, atlamerch.com. We've got really cool shirts, hats, stickers, and I absolutely love our keychains. Now, let's go for a drive. Now that sure feels good. Oh yeah. I mean, just for days, you're gonna have torque. 
What'd you say it is? Six? It's right at 600, but it's the blower that makes that torque. You don't get that with an NA motor. Right. You know? Right. You don't get that roll your toe into the throttle and it pushes you in the seat. Right. Something you seem to blend well is when you have a supercharged car is sitting in the driver's seat. I've got a nice blend of hearing the blower but also hearing the exhaust. This thing's just bitch. I just want to go drive all day. It just drives great, man. It really does. You could get on this car and just drive it anywhere. I just love the torque, torque. you get from a supercharger. That's right. Man. You don't get that turbo, you don't get it NA. It's the only way you could get it, really, huh? It really is. And the blowers are getting so good nowadays, you know? I mean, man, these things work so bitchin' and they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger, which means more airflow, which means more horsepower at the same boost levels. The yeah. intercooler systems are becoming so efficient. I mean, it just makes you want a supercharged motor, you know? Yeah. A turbo motor might make more power, but it doesn't make it down low like a blower car does. No. Which blower is this again, Edelbrock? This is a 2300 Edelbrock, yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude, I'm barely getting into it. I'm I'm like four grand and it's it pulling goes. that hard. It just makes you want to drive it, man. And that's, you know, to me, that's what this is about, Sean. It's yep. about driving this stuff. Yep. All right, you guys, that is it for our shoot of this completely badass 71 Camaro from Timeless Customs. You know, th this is very typical of Jason and his guys, in my opinion, is they build cars that you get in, you turn the key, as soon as you start driving, it just makes you want to keep driving. The look of it, obviously, extraordinary. And considering that they did this car, you know, started the build six years ago, completed about four years ago, I guess it's why he calls his company Timeless Customs. The truth is the builds that he does won't date themselves over time. And I think that's really amazing. Just absolutely stunning, beautiful, wonderful car. So hope you guys had fun in this one, man. As always, thanks for hanging and watching and supporting what we do. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you in the next episode. All right, man, later.